Barcelona are beaten. Inter Milan will go to Madrid. And Jose Mourinho's moment has come again. Immediately after this heroic performance that led Inter Milan to their first European Cup final in 38 years and prevented Barcelona from winning the trophy at his future club stadium, Jose Mourinho realized his work in Italy was finished and he would finally take up the challenge of managing Real Madrid. Forty-seven years young and coming off the back of a historic trouble with Inter, Jose Mourinho in 2010 was the hottest property in Europe. In fact, just to highlight how in demand Mourinho was at the time, Real Madrid paid a record-breaking compensation fee for a manager at just over 8 million euros. But after all the fanfare, the hype and the excitement calmed down, it was time for Mourinho to get to work. The Real Madrid side he took over wasn't the great team of the late 90s and early 2000s and had been going through a crisis of sorts. Despite finishing with an incredible 96 points the season before, Real Madrid had finished as runners-up in the league for the last two seasons, suffered humiliating defeats to clubs both big and small, and for a club which held the reputation of being European Cup kings, they had been eliminated in the round of 16 of the Champions League for the past six seasons in a row. Not only had Mourinho taken on the biggest job in world football, but he had taken up the task of defeating a Barcelona team that was quickly writing itself into history under the management of the new kid on the block, Pep Guardiola. Barcelona had won an incredible seven trophies in Guardiola's first two years in charge and were only stopped from retaining the Champions League by Inter Milan and Jose Mourinho himself. Coming up against the likes of Xavi, Iniesta, Messi, Villa, Alves and Busquets, Mourinho had to invoke something in himself and in a squad that he had never had to before. Jose Mourinho's first season in charge saw the addition of Mesut Ozil, Semi Khedira and Angel Di Maria to the squad. After a great start to the season in which Real Madrid averaged over three goals a game and sat at the top of the league table, they came up against Barcelona in the first Clasico of the season. Madrid were completely outclassed at Camp Nou and conceded five unanswered goals in what would become the biggest defeat of Jose Mourinho's career. What occurred over those 90 minutes would completely alter how Mourinho would approach these matches for the rest of his time in Spain. Mourinho had set his team up to match up to Barcelona on this occasion and after this game he would set out to neutralize Barcelona and seek to capitalize on the chances that typically arose in these frantic high stakes games. Despite the magnitude of the defeat and the media circus around it, Mourinho refused to cower. He instructed his players to go with their families and friends for a walk around the city and to let people see that they weren't mentally defeated, finally stating to his players that they must show their balls and that the title was still there to be fought for. Madrid stayed in second for the rest of the season and remained within touching distance of the league until the last few weeks of the season. In Europe, Real got over their round of 16 hump and reached the semi-finals of the Champions League for the first time in 8 years, only to be eliminated by none other than Barcelona, who went on to win the trophy once again for the second time in 3 years. The only remaining avenue for redemption was in the form of the Copa del Rey. Real Madrid once again came up against Barcelona after beating Murcia, Levante, Atletico Madrid and Sevilla on their way to their first Copa del Rey final in 7 years. On the day, the match was tightly contested with Real Madrid finally scoring through a Ronaldo header in extra time to win their first Copa del Rey trophy in 18 years and give Mourinho his first piece of silver at the club. The win not only showed that Barcelona could be matched but they could be defeated when the stakes were at their highest. Despite the inability to do better in the league and in Europe, the victory galvanized the club and gave Mourinho a platform to improve the team in his second season in charge, historically the most successful at all his previous clubs. Real Madrid came into the new season ready for the challenge that was to come after spending most of their preseason preparations in the United States and China. 
The club kept their faith in their Copa winning team and made four signings for squad depth, but only Fabio Contrao and Nuri Sahin expected to break into the first team. With Real having won the cup and Barcelona winning the league, the only thing on Mourinho's mind at this stage in the season was getting one over their rivals in the season opening Spanish Super Cup. Despite the minor title on the line, bragging rights and the chance at getting some early season momentum going was enough to raise the stakes. 9 goals, 3 red cards and 1 eye poke over the next 180 minutes was enough to separate the two teams as Barcelona got the upper hand to win the first piece of silverware of the season. Onto the proper business, and Real Madrid started the season with ambitions of not only retaining the Copa del Rey but winning a historic treble. The opening trimester of the season was almost pure perfection from Real Madrid as they won 11 of their first 13 games in the Liga and scored 46 goals, almost averaging 4 goals a game. Real also ended the group stage of the Champions League as the only team with a perfect record after winning all 6 games and conceding only 2 goals. Just as the winter break was approaching, the first El Clasico of the league season took place. With Real Madrid sitting comfortably at the top of the league, a win would not only serve to open up a gap with Barcelona, but would allow Madrid to focus on the other competitions still to fight for. But as had been the case in recent years, Madrid once again lost the Clasico at the Bernabeu and gave Barcelona hope for a second half of the season comeback. Despite the defeat, the club ended the year with all their ambitions in place, on course for a potential treble, scoring goals left, right and centre, and breaking records match after match. The team that Mourinho had built wasn't quite as stylistically pure as their rivals Barcelona, but it featured incredibly skilled players all over the pitch that knew how to find the goal and never knew just when to concede defeat. With Di Maria and Ozil on production duty, Xabi Alonso and Sami Khedira cleaning up, and Ronaldo, Benzema and Higuain scoring more than their fair share, Jose Mourinho had set his team up to be effortlessly effective at recycling possession and utterly explosive on the break with tireless runners all over the pitch, something that had been lacking for a team with aspirations the size of Real Madrid's. After the new year, the squad came back refreshed and beat Malaga over two legs to advance to the quarterfinals of the Copa del Rey where they would face Barcelona for the ninth time in nine months and potentially retain the trophy. Once again, Guardiola's side prevailed over Real but the second leg in which Barcelona fought to hold their goal advantage at the new camp gave Mourinho his players and the fans belief that Barca could not only be matched in their stadium but they could be defeated. With the final Clasico of the season set to be played right in the midst of the business end of the season in April, Mourinho's side spent the next 10 weeks picking up momentum and collecting victory after victory as they set their sights on a highly achievable European double. After the Copa defeat in January, Real did not lose a single domestic match again for the rest of the season. They went on a 10-game winning streak in La Liga, cruised past CSK in Moscow and Apoel Nicosia in the knockout rounds of the Champions League to set up a semi-final with Bayern Munich. In the league, Real Madrid drew 3 out of 5 matches leading up to El Clasico to give Barcelona an outside chance of stealing the title with 5 games remaining. After losing 2-1 in the first leg of the semi-final of the Champions League to Bayern following an off night for the whole team, it looked like everything might disintegrate at the most crucial point in the season, like it had 8 years prior in 03-04. In a crunch week for the entire season, Real Madrid faced Barcelona, Bayern Munich and Sevilla within a 7 day period with everything on the line. Despite retaining just 28% of the possession, Real Madrid showed pure efficiency in front of goal and beat Barcelona in their own home with goals from Kedira and Ronaldo, with Ronaldo's iconic celebration serving as a high point in Los Blancos' memorable season. With this win, Real registered their first Clasico League win in four years and opened up a 7-point lead with just four games left in the season. The next big test saw Jose Mourinho's side manage to beat Bayern Munich in regular time but not enough to win the tie. A tight 30 minutes of extra time was followed by penalties in which Bayern Munich emerged victorious after missed penalties by Ronaldo, Ramos and Kaká. Real Madrid won convincingly against Sevilla to pretty much secure the league title and end their four-year title drought. Mourinho and Madrid won the remaining three games of the season and broke several records once the season was over. 
Real became the first ever team to record a 100-point season in Europe, scored the most goals ever in a league season, which remains unmatched today, and Mourinho became the first coach to win the league and cup in four different countries. The most remarkable thing, however, was Pep Guardiola's decision to step down from the Barcelona post and take a sabbatical, effectively ending the Pep Barcelona era. In Jose Mourinho's Real Madrid side, Guardiola had met his antithesis and chose to concede defeat in favor of facing up against Mourinho once again. Mourinho's last season in Spain was characteristically implosive. Filled with disputes in the dressing room, clashes with the press, and an ever-growing us-versus-them cult mentality that left a sour taste in the mouth, Real Madrid finished the season with just the Super Cup to show for their efforts and lost the Copa del Rey final to their city rivals Atletico Madrid with Ronaldo capping off a disappointing season with an extra-time red card. Jose Mourinho went on to describe the season as the worst season of his entire career but he left a legacy that would shape the rest of the decade for Real Madrid. He installed a winning belief and confidence that had been sorely missed at Real Madrid before his arrival, re-establishing the club standing as a European powerhouse and left behind the core of a team that went on to win countless trophies in the years that followed. Despite all the highs Mourinho has experienced throughout his incredible career, his time in Spain squaring up against the great Barcelona team of Pep Guardiola will always be held in high regard.